Imagine that we are looking up to the sky and admire the grandeur of the universe. We cherish the stars and in doing that we can't notice two patterns that glow up there. The big dipper and the small dipper. Now, after a period of reflection, we start wondering just how similar are the two. Well, in order to answer this question, we need to translate one of them, rotate it and then scale it without modifying the original shape of the dipper. But how do we find these transformations? Well, this is where the kapsch umeyama algorithm comes into play, an algorithm used to align point patterns. The first thing it does is to find the centroids of the points, which in our case is just the mean of the big dipper points represented by the matrix A and the little dipper points represented by the matrix B. Then we extract the centroid of each dipper from its corresponding points matrix, moving them in the center of our coordinate system. Now we have to compute the rotation matrix necessary to bring the two point patterns into alignment. And let's say that we want to align the little dipper to the big dipper, so the matrix B to the matrix A. The Capsch Umeyama algorithm achieved this by calculating the following covariance matrix, which describes the relationship between the points in the original and target point sets. And by applying the singular value decomposition on this covariance matrix, we can obtain the optimal rotation matrix when we multiply the two resulting singular value matrices. However, there is one important aspect to this transformation. What if we also have a reflection here, meaning that the two sets of points patterns can be aligned well through a simple rotation and instead we have to perform a reflection along one of the axes. For instance, imagine that we have the following two dippers. No matter how you rotate them, you will never be able to align the two because we have a reflection. To detect and correct the reflection, we calculate the determinant of the two singular values matrices. If they have the same sign, then there is no reflection. And if they have a different sign, then there is a reflection between the two point patterns. After computing this sign value, we construct the matrix S which contains once on the main diagonal, except the last value, which is replaced by D, the sign value we have just computed, and zeros in rest. Finally, instead of simply multiplying the singular matrices to obtain the rotation matrix, we also introduce the matrix S in the middle of this multiplication, which takes into consideration the reflection, if any, between the two point patterns. Now that we have obtained the rotation matrix, we can find the scaling factor. The scaling factor C is obtained by firstly calculating the variance of the dipper we want to transform, and then dividing this value by the sum of singular values we obtain from the decomposition of the covariance matrix. And yeah, before doing that, we also multiply the singular values with S so we take into account the reflection. Finally, the translation necessary to align the two dippers is given by the following equation. This is simply derived from the overall transformation, which says that in order to align a point from the little dipper into the big dipper, we need to center that point by extracting the centroid of the set of points patterns we transform, rotate, and then scale it, and then translate it to the big dipper by adding its centroid. And if we were to extend this, here it is, the translation vector. And that's basically how the Capsch umeyama algorithm works and how we can use it to align point patterns like the big and the little dippers. There are some a little bit advanced topics that I didn't really dig deep into like how the singular value decomposition works or what is a covariance matrix, but that's because this is a topic that's covered really well here on YouTube and I've added some references to some further study materials in the description. However, if you would like to see a video about anything presented here, that wasn't covered in depth, please let me know in the comments below. Also, don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to be up to date with the new content I create. See you next time, bye bye!